Hello friends and welcome back. This is another short and interesting tutorial about using the morph naming scheme in PowerPoint. Both the PowerPoint animation presentations are inspired by two different projects. The first is by AI Boardman, and the second is by Dennis Hoogsted at Dribble.com. Even though the animation output in PowerPoint is not the same but still you will surely learn a few new morph tips and tricks that might help you to build more creative PowerPoint presentations. You must also watch our tutorial on how to use the selection pane in PowerPoint if you have not used it before and the link to that video is given in the cards and video description. There is a detailed article by Microsoft about morph transition tips and tricks and that link has also given in the video description. The article explains how you can use the double exclamation points and assign the same custom name to two objects with the help of the selection pane. It also explains what you can do with this feature and what are the rules to use the morph naming scheme. You can also read about certain examples that you can try in PowerPoint. So, here we have two presentations and in the first presentation, we have three slides, each having a different shape object. If you open the selection pane from the home tab then you can notice that we have used the morph naming scheme in this presentation, where on each slide the shape objects are having the same name having two exclamation signs in front of their names. That is what it all takes to transform one shape to another by assigning the same name on all the slides while having two exclamation signs in front of the name. All the three slides are having three different shape objects filled with a picture. On the first slide, we have a circle. On the second slide, we have a cross shape, and on the third slide, we have a rectangle. If I duplicate all the slides and change their name to shape one without the two exclamation signs, then the shape objects will not transform from one shape to another, instead, they will start fading. To explain the morph naming scheme in much detail, we have another presentation with 10 slides. Here on the first and second slide, you can see that we have totally different shape objects drawn using the shape tools and many different shape layers have been grouped to create a total of five objects on each of the slides. On the second slide, we have applied the morph transition and if you look into the shape layer names in the selection pane, then you will find that both slides are having identical names for objects but without the two exclamation sign scheme. So, if you run the slideshow then it will just create a fade effect instead of transforming the shapes. But that is not always the case as we have another example of the third and fourth slides. On these two slides, we used the icons from the insert tab. You can use the ungroup command for most of these icons to have separate layers. Then you can rename those shape layers through the selection pane. Keep in mind that the third and fourth slides are having three shape layers having identical names without the morph naming scheme. On the fourth slide, we have applied the morph transition and if you run the slideshow from the third slide then you can see how the shape layers are transforming instead of fading and that is too without the morph naming scheme. As the names and shapes are mostly identical on both sides, the morph shows its default behavior and transforms the objects one into another. Over the fifth and sixth slides, we are using the morph naming scheme by assigning two exclamation signs in front of each shape layer name. So, you will see the similar results as you had seen for the third and fourth slides. The eighth slide is having totally different icon shape layers as compared to the seventh slide but both slides are having three shape layers with identical names and that is two with the morph naming scheme. So, upon slideshow, you will see how these three layers transform from the seventh to eighth slide instead of creating a fade effect. The ninth and tenth slides seem identical to the first and second slides but if you look into the selection pane then you can see that for most of the shapes different layers have been used instead of grouping them. Basically, let's say I want to transform this gun to an axe shape, and the gun is a combination of six groups and ungrouped shape layers together. 
On the 10th slide, you can see that all the layers for axe shape are having the same names that we used for gun on the 9th slide and that is 2 with the 2 exclamation signs morph naming schemes. If you compare the shape layers on both slides, then the only difference that you find will be in their grouping, ungrouping method. We grouped and ungrouped and named the layers according to how and which shape we wanted to transform into another. So, I hope you might have got my point and will find this tutorial informative. Let me know by liking, sharing, commenting and subscribing to our channel. Thanks a lot for watching and we will meet in our next tutorial. Bye and take care.